I would say climate change is relevant for a business because it affects um, every aspect of the business. Um, it's a risk issue, for example, if businesses have factories in locations that are prone to flooding um, or extreme weather conditions that are going to be coming more and more in the future, that's a physical risk. But I also think it's a risk in terms of consumer behavior and changing preferences of consumers. We've seen with the Fridays for Future movement, for example, that consumers are becoming more aware. So there's been a huge reduction in the number of flights taken in, in Europe by people. So that has implications for a business like airline business, airports. It also has implications for the train businesses because they've seen an increase instead. Every company has a carbon footprint. If you're producing goods, um, you're using energy, and energy is a form of using carbon because typically we still take energy from fossil fuels. Um, and so this is another major driver that will happen in the next decade or two where if we really want to reduce our carbon footprint, we have to shift the energy use that we have from non-renewable resources like oil to a renewable resource like say solar or wind energy. To some extent, some companies are already doing this. You can see a company like Microsoft, which um, uses mostly now renewable energy to uh, power its servers, uh, of which there are a lot. But there's still many companies are not doing this. Um, and so as this shift of, of fossil fuels is changing to renewable energies, all companies are going to be affected. Public relations or, or reputation is a major aspect of this as well. So you see some companies that are uh, so-called leaders in this field or, or trailblazers stepping ahead of what others are doing. Um, a good example might be a company like IKEA that are taking um, a lot of steps uh, about their sustainability generally, including carbon initiatives, where they're really looking at every aspect of their business. Um, for example, how they make their furniture, but also their supply chains, um, where the material comes from. And of course, in the case of IKEA, you have a huge consumer group that is physically traveling to your store that each of them has an impact on the natural environment and on climate. So these are the types of things that I IKEA is thinking about really proactively. Not every company, of course, is, is a trailblazer. So I think there's a whole bunch of companies that are still trying to get on board with this or are only addressing this as a sort of reactionary um, activity, you know, when stakeholder pressure becomes strong. But we, we're seeing increasingly that companies that are not paying attention to this are not only facing a reputational um, downside, but also increasing financial risk. So shareholders are starting to value these companies less if they don't have um, a strategy to think about climate change, for example. There are initiatives out there that companies are joining to become more aware of sustainability issues or climate issues. Um, a good one that I can think of is the CEO Water Initiative, so where CEOs of companies are really taking a good look of, at how they're using water, how is that affecting local communities around where the company's factories are based, are they reducing the amount of water, uh, fresh water that they're using in their production system, can they recycle more of it, can they eliminate less polluted water into the environment. I think the benefit of those kinds of initiatives is that if you can create a sort of social effort around this, even between peer companies, then it becomes the next standard um, for companies to meet, and perhaps you will get more of them on board. There can also be downsides to these initiatives that companies sign up for them, but they don't really do much. Uh, they just say that they're doing something. So this is the classic example of greenwashing. I would say in general, companies are aware that the Fridays of, for Future movement is happening. They kind of need to be aware of what's happening out there in the world. But you know, Greta Thunberg herself famously said when she went to America that people in America view climate change as a sort of debatable um, issue that somehow this isn't yet a fact. Whereas in Europe we've clearly determined that this is a fact that's happening. So I don't think it's that companies are not aware. I think it's that the debate is different in different regions of the world. And that in the United States, for example, there's still a pushback that for whatever reason climate change might be a hoax, that it's not really happening or that it's not due to human causes. Whereas, of course, we know by now that there is unanimous agreement amongst scientists that climate change is a human-driven activity.
the most obvious opportunity is renewable energy, solar, wind power, hydropower. I think new jobs are being created um, in this field. But I think there are also more subtle opportunities for companies in terms of really thinking ahead of the shifting dynamics in the market. And by market, I don't mean just the financial market, but also uh, what consumers want, where preferences are going, what does it mean to be a strategic leader in your field? Um, sometimes this is directly tied with cost and efficiency. So if you can eliminate, um, say, a huge carbon footprint waste from how you generate energy, then that's also more cost efficient. So the company benefits in a sort of win-win scenario. Not only does the carbon footprint go down, but actually the financial profit of the company may go up. It's pretty clear that we have to target emissions. We know that if we do not bend our emissions curve within the next 10 years, that the temperature of the planet will rise to a degree where we will see a different world. We won't have the world that we understand as it is now. I think somewhat tied to this as a secondary issue is uh, the topic of biodiversity. And the reason why that's important is because to fight things like um, the effect of a rising temperature in the planet, you need biodiversity to combat and fight this. Um, so it's not just about how many trees we plant, for example, but it's also about having lots of different kinds of trees being planted because the resilience of the whole ecosystem depends on having lots of species. And because we don't know what the world's going to look like with a four degree, five degree temperature rise, we need that resilience because nature is innovative and will come up with a solution. But in order for that to happen, nature needs lots of options.